Coming up in this episode, Dylan Brown stood down by the INRL. Heathley Forward leaves club with immediate effect. The former coach joins championship rivals. And Lee sets a raid for two English young forwards. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe, and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing, and if you want to continue seeing more. Well, I'm back with more Rugby League stories, and I have four for you today. And one has come out of the blue from last weekend, as it has been announced that NRL have stood down Parramatta 58 Dylan Brown after he was charged with five counts of sexual touching following an alleged incident at the Golden Sheep Hotel in Sydney on Saturday night. Brown faced court for the first time on Wednesday and he's due back there later this month and if convicted could face up to five years in prison. And as per the NRL's no-fault stand-down policy, the NRL automatically send, suspends players who are charged with an offence that carries more a maximum of prison term of 11 years or more. But NRL CEO Andrew Abdo is able to intervene for lesser sentences and has typically exercised this discretionary power when the player has been charged with offences against women. An NRL statement read, The NRL today advised the Parramatta Eels that Dylan Brown is subject to a no-fault stand-down condition under the NRL's rules. North's, uh, New South Wales Police charged Dylan Brown with several accounts of sexual touching without consent following an incident at Double Bay on Saturday the 3rd of June 2023. The NRL decided decision shouldn't in no way be interpreted as a view on the innocence or guilt of the player. Which brought a response from the Parramatta Eels, as the Eels released their own statement in regards to the Brown situation. The Parramatta Eels have been informed by the NRL that Dylan Brown has been stood down from team selection as part of the NRL's no fault stand down policy regarding the past incidents the incident this past weekend. Dylan will not be available, eligible for selection until he receives the clearance from the NRL. Out of respect for the legal process now underway, the club will not be making any further comment at this time. On the legal side, a part of the stipulated conditions of Brown's bail states that he is not allowed to enter any licensed premises in Double Bay the eastern Sydney suburb where the Golden Sheep is located. His solicitor David Newman represented him in court. Mr Newman said outside court on Wednesday, Mr Brown and I have reviewed the CCTV footage of yesterday at the Bondi police station. It does not support the notion that on five separate occasions Mr Brown has approached this young woman with both hands as and with both hands as touching of her breasts. It does not support that at this point of time. The prosecution agreed to two variations of his bail, including having his reporting conditions reduced to three days a week to just Monday only. Basically reporting to the police where his location is. Mr Newman told the court he was hopeful of the matter being resolved when the, it returns to court next month. Brown is not the only NRL star to be stood down due to the alleged off the field behaviour. With the likes of TC Rob Rabati of the Broncos also stood down after being charged with one counter sexual assault last December. North Queensland's Cowboy star Luciano Leilua was stood down last year over domestic violence charges, which were dropped in May. And earlier this season, Dragon star Francis Molo copped a two game ban after pleading guilty to a domestic violence charge. 
Championship club Keefley have announced that Italy international Brendan Santi has left the club after receiving an offer that would be difficult for anyone to turn down. The 29-year-old forward has made 47 appearances for the Cougars since arriving at the club ahead of the 21, uh, 2021 season from Newcastle Thunder. Santi, who has gone on to represent Italy in his last three World Cups, has activated a clause in his contract and Keefley have agreed to release him from the remainder of his contract. This brought a statement out from Cougar's chief executive, Ryan O'Neill, who said, It is with regret that Brendan needs to leave the club in, with immediate effect, with an offer that would be difficult for anyone to turn down. I've gone on record over the last two or three weeks and said if the player has his head turned, then it's time to let him move on, as it's impossible to focus on their job at hand. Brendan has been an example of a player for both Keefley on and off the field, and I, and the board, wish him well with his next move. The Australian-born Santi came through the ranks at West Tigers, making his NRL debut in the 2014 season. He played 11 games for the Tigers in his NRL career, before spending a couple of years in the Queensland Cup and the New South Wales Cup. Santi made the move to the Northern Hemisphere with Toulouse in 2019, where he spent a season with the French club before joining Newcastle and then Keefley. On the international stage, Santi has won 15 caps for Italy, representing his Italian heritage in those last three World Cups that we mentioned. On departing Keefley, Santi said, I would like to thank the club, the O'Neill family, and Ryan and Gar uh, Carol Garcia personally for everything that has been done for me during my time here. The generosity and support my, uh, during my time at Keefley has been greatly appreciated, and this is not one that I have made easily. Speaking about the decision. To the fans, I must thank them for, from the bottom of my heart. You have welcomed me to the town and have taken me in as one as your own. And for that, I'm forever grateful. I realise this will be an unpopular decision with the fans, but I felt it was one I had to make to ensure I didn't stagnate as a player. Reports have been circulating about his next club, and it has been suggested that the club in question for Santa's services is York Knights. But there has been no confirmation from the club or the player himself as of yet. Next, we turn our attention down south as London Broncos have announced that former player Reese Lovegrove has joined the club as the assistant coach to director of rugby and performance. Mike Eccles. Reese, who recently was the head coach at the fellow championship side Keefley, we uh, were he guided the club to promotion last season, going the entirety of the campaign unbeaten. Speaking on the appointment, Mike Eccles said, Reese is a fantastic coach and someone I truly, truly believe that will add great value to our group. His record at the Cougars over the past few years speaks for itself. I actually saw Reese coach during his playing days at the Broncos. After being stood down due to a concussion for a period, Reese helped coach the odd drill here and there. It was clear to see that a small snapshot that coaching and delivery what came naturally to him, and that he would go on to be a quality coach. Reese has a passion for developing players, and you can see very early on how much he enjoys relaying his knowledge and experience to younger players. Reese is a brilliant rugby player brain, and he will provide invaluable support to players and myself as we progress further into the season. Welcome back to London, lovey. As a player, Reese spent the majority of his time playing in Super League for Hulk KR. Before spells at London Broncos and Bradford Bulls. He left the Cougars within the last month and now moves back to the club he knows well enough. 
On his return to London, Reese said it's been good to get be back. Obviously, it's been a few years and in, in a different role now, but I'm really excited to be a part of what we're doing down here. There is a pre-existing culture here and I'm just looking to fit in and out Mike where I can. I'm just looking forward to coaching and teaching the players and adding my little bit and adding value to what appears to be a really good and finally we come to transfer news as we look at Lee Leopards as they are rumoured to have lined up another two British farmers forwards in the aftermath of landing a deal for Owen Trout from Huddersfield Giants. Rugby League Live understands that the Lavers are set to sign off a deal for St. Helens prop Dan Norman and Swinton Lions emerging talent Lewis Brogan. Norman who is 25, is an Ireland international who is set to depart the Super League champions at the end of the season. Coming in at 6 foot 5, the towering forward started his career at Witness Vikings before a loan spell at London Broncos. He joined St. Helens in 2021 but has found his opportunities limited, playing just 15 times in those three season, uh, the three seasons so far. He did have a short loan spell at Lee last season, and the emergence of George Delaney has seen Norman drop further down the pecking order. But he now appears to be set another Super League opportunity with Lee, who have the objective of expanding the size of their squad for the next season. That has also opened the door for Brogan, and the 23-year-old forward is the latest young talent to be given an opportunity at the Lions, following in the footsteps of Matty Ashton, Andy Ackers, Frankie Halton and Chris Hatkin. The utility forward, Swinton brought him in from Lee Miners Rangers as a teenager represented England at the youth level. He has made 58 appearances at it during his time at Swinton Lions. And with that, that's the end of the episode, so thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe and share this video worldwide, as well as clicking on that notification bell for any updates on new videos that may be coming your way in the near future. Tell me what your thoughts are on today's episode in the comment section below as it's open for business and you, me and Dupree can talk about the uh, entire entirety of Rugby League if you want to, just as long as the converse is civil. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. And I'll end the episode as you always do by wishing you all the very best. And please stay safe. And I'll see you in the next episode.